if you look through the 100 different product updates is both adding features and functions to our merchants to help them do their jobs better, but also helping bring the right buyers to them in an environment where it's getting like harder and harder and harder. Hello and welcome to Shopify Masters, your companion for starting and building a business. I'm Benjamin Gottlieb. Each week on this show, you hear stories from Shopify merchants about how they made it and the advice that they have for you, wherever you are on your entrepreneurial journey. But just like any creator, our merchants use tools, tools that are constantly being invented and then tinkered with to grow with you and adapt to changes in commerce. It can be a lot. But luckily for you today, we're joined by two experts in the Shopify ecosystem, Desiree Motamedi, our Vice President of Product Marketing, and Glenn Coates, our VP of Product. They're both here with me for this special episode of Shopify Masters to walk you through some of the most important updates on our platform this year and how those updates are useful to you. We're also going to dispel some myths about Shopify, which you will not want to miss. Glenn and Des, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Excited to be here. What's up, Ben? <laughs> Thanks for having us. Of course. It's such an honor. We're so happy to have you here with us on Shopify Masters. You know, Glenn, I think we can all agree that this is kind of a tough time to be a merchant for many. Advertising costs are rising. We're dealing with inflation, not just as individuals, but as a nation, as a globe. Shipping delays are still lingering from COVID. How do you think this climate has informed some of the product updates that all of you are rolling out this year with the winter editions? Yeah, I mean, like we are always trying to, I guess you can think of it as like even the score in the favor of the entrepreneur. Like that's what we do. We build software, we build technology that gives superpowers to entrepreneurs. I think we can all see that the scales have kind of tipped more against the little guy lately, especially with some of the things that have happened to online advertising, ATT, so on and so forth. Um, and so a lot of what we do is to try and figure out, okay, well, how can we even the score a little bit back towards entrepreneurship and independent merchants? And so if you look at the edition today, A, there's a lot of stuff that's, I guess, what you could think of as like features and functions, like new features added to the platform that help you sell in new ways, do new things, things like bundles, things like, you know, markets, things, like, things we'll talk about today that are really, really cool. But there's also things in the edition that help bring the massive power of shop uh, to the benefit of all Shopify merchants, this great big pool of buyers out there in the world who are all getting more and more used to clicking that purple shop pay button um, and making it easier and easier for those buyers to, to buy from our merchants. And so a lot of what we're doing, if you look through the 100 different product updates, is both adding features and functions to our merchants to help them do their jobs better, but also helping bring the right buyers to them in an environment where it's getting like harder and harder and harder to, to find and engage with those buyers on the internet. Glenn, you brought up advertisement changes, and I would love to pick your brain, also Des's brain about that. But you also brought up, you can check out additions, additions, additions. Well, if you're listening and you want to check out additions, you can head over to shopify.com slash additions. I think maybe to level set, Des, when we say additions, what are we saying exactly? What exactly is additions? And why is it that we're so excited about talking about additions? <laughs> Yeah, I would say about a year ago, um, Toby had pinged me and said, hey, Des, I'd love to chat with you about this idea I have. Toby, of course, the CEO of Shopify. Yes, our, our CEO. He had this idea of really trying to show the momentum of all the things that the teams have been working on internally and create this digital experience that kind of packaged all the work that every product and engineering team had worked across all of Shopify of over six months. And, you know, this idea was like, let's package this up, have a moment. And at this point, you know, we were just kind of getting out of the COVID era where we weren't really doing things in person, but we really wanted to have to, you know, share with our ecosystem, like all the things that we've been working on. And so that was the dawn of the first edition. And so we did that last summer. And now, as you can see, we're trying to do this as an ongoing cadence every six months. And something else that I think is super important that in the question that you asked Glenn just recently is that. I think the, the nuance about each edition is that we're very specific about how we lay out the content for folks. We have these chapters that really talk about the solutions that they're trying to solve for. So anybody who's just getting started in this space, they really can go and find out all the different things that we're shipping that can help them in their day-to-day -day business with building an e-commerce business today. So it's something that we do that's very deliberate and, and purposeful. And we try to make that sure that whenever we launch a new edition, that someone can go find, oh, I want to see what they're doing around customer 
customer acquisition or how to find customers. They can go find out and you know see what we're doing there or how do we you know manage our business on the back end. They're going to find you know details on that as well too. So really important that you know for anyone who is really starting to either get started or someone who's as sophisticated as like a Supreme, they can go see all the great things that we're shipping in that moment in time. Two quick ones there, Des. We're recording at a time where the biggest drop on the internet has ever seen just happened 20 minutes ago. I just went and bought two skateboard decks that I totally don't need, but they'll be going on the wall for sure. (laughs) The second thing I would say, I mean, Des, I think what we kind of blew past there a little bit is that before editions, I don't think it was that easy for our merchants, for the entrepreneurs who depend on Shopify to even know what we were shipping. Like we had a change log. If you really paid attention to that and read every line item, you could kind of figure it out. But it was you know not, not easy to stay on top of. And I mean, Des, you even told me like on your travels to you were in London last year and you would walk into stores and, you know, you'd find out people would be like, oh, yeah, I run my online store on Shopify. And you'd say, oh, why do you not run your point of sale on Shopify? And they'd be like, Did, I didn't even know you had one. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that happened a lot. You know, I think it's incumbent on us to help people understand because Shopify is kind of big now, right? Like we do a lot of stuff. And even just understanding what that stuff is, is like something that we need to get better at helping people understand. Yeah, I, you nailed it. Um, I think the number one thing and the purpose, I think, of this edition or all the editions is to show the breadth and depth of everything that Shopify does. It's so clear that every time you speak to a merchant or even a developer or anybody in the space that's like touching commerce, they have no clue what we offer. They have some ideas. They're like, okay, you guys do checkout. You can do like an online store, but they don't realize all the sophistication and all these tools that we have available to them that is really from getting started to doing POS, as Glenn just mentioned, to shop, which is like our own platform, that shop pay button. The the list goes on and on. I mean, even just what the improvements that we make in admin where someone spends most of their time is so important. And so we really think about all the little details so that every person who wants to learn anything in the space, we have solutions for them, which is really important. You have solutions for them, and we're so happy you're here on the show. I'm chatting with Des Motamedi, the VP of Product Marketing, and Glenn Coates, our VP of Products. Des, I'm so curious because here we are walking through all of these incredible updates, objectively incredible. I've checked out the additions page, by the way, if you're listening, shopify.com slash additions. You can check it out yourself. And if you know what you're looking for, if you need a solve for a certain thing, Maybe it's shipping or fulfillment. Maybe it's checkout. It's easy to navigate. But I'm just so curious for your team being the VP of product marketing, how do you get the right information to the right folks, especially those who don't know what it is they're looking for? Because it's such an enormous offering what we've shipped this past winter. I'm a big believer, and this is something that's been like a mantra of mine from even before I even came to Shopify, but you have different audiences. It's super important that you're talking to them in the way that they care about. So as I said, someone who's just getting started is someone who's as sophisticated as a Supreme. So you want to make sure that you're always speaking in their language, that they really understand what they're talking about. So when we think about building the edition and when we put all the materials that are in there, we're really thoughtful about based on like, you know, as you said, from someone who wants to learn about our back office, like what are specific features that are going to be, you know, interesting for them. But we also try to tag things that say, hey, this is for someone who's a plus merchant or someone who's like an enterprise, you know, customer or whatever it may be so that they can really see that this solution is actually for them or that feature is made for them. We are trying to be better about that over time. I could see this you know, where there's different audience specific experiences for people in the future. We actually, in our first edition, had a developer mode um, and it was a very specific landing page that was just for developers. We decided this time not to have it, but I actually kind of hopefully secretly want to bring that back just because I thought it was such a great way to kind of show all the breadth and depth that we do for developers as well. And you can see that that would actually be really wonderful for someone who's a mid-market or just when someone who's just getting started that we kind of package it up for them in a nice way where they can say, this is just made for me. That's the beauty of product marketing. You want to be, be able to talk to your audiences in the best way possible. And then for Luddites like me, we can kind of leave that stuff, all the tech development out of the way, just get it to the meat and potatoes. Exactly. Glenn, I'm just curious what you think about that. One of the good things and bad things about Shopify is how so many parts of the product are integrated to one another, right? Like so many parts of the product, like, you know, if you have A and you can have A or you can have B, but if you have A and B, they work together uh, like peanut butter and jelly. 
that makes the product really amazing. It makes Dez's job really hard because every which way you try to cut the product, you're always cutting across one of those boundaries. We did this kind of cool, weird thing this time where it's a little bit of an Easter egg, but if, you, if you're clicking around in the edition, you'll notice sometimes when you mouse over the headings, this little kind of galaxy planet thing shows up and you can click on it. And then you get into this like 3D rendering of like how the different parts of the product all connect together. So something from the first section about conversion might connect to something in the fifth section about marketing, which might connect to something in the, the, the eighth section about developer platform. And you can really see how all these parts kind of fit together. But like, I mean, this is why I'm not in charge of product marketing because this part of the job is insanely hard. Sorry, Des. <laughs> but like the hard thing about Shopify is explaining like everything's kind of connected to everything and each part makes the other part better. I love that you brought up that Easter egg. So you can also find it in the navigation. It's called Product Map. Go find it there if you can't find the, the thing that Glenn just tried to describe. But I think it's an important piece because it's exactly what we were just talking about, like where people just don't even know, A, that there's certain features, but then also how these features work with each other. And I think that's an important part. I think it's like a, almost a surprise to be like, oh, wow, I didn't realize that as, you know, Glenn just mentioned conversion is tied to like, oh, to shop pay. Oh, what is this? These two things work together. I think we're going to do a lot more of that, not only on the platform on additions, but I think you're going to see a lot more of that even on .com as well. We really want people to understand how these things work together so that they can do better on their business as well, too. So um, you'll see more of that hopefully later this year. All of this working together stuff is part of, I mean, like I've run businesses in the past, like I've, I've run businesses that were both retail businesses, actually selling product. I used to have my own tech startup. And in every one of these businesses, what I've ended up with is like basically a, a whole big pile of different bits of software that like I have to kind of integrate together and make them work with each other. And I have to pay some guy to connect the APIs and blah, 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 blah. And sometimes when you have two pieces of software that are both like really important to you, it is actually worth doing the work to connect them together. But like, sometimes it just isn't. Sometimes you just want to do your job and sometimes you just kind of want the stuff to work together. And that's also a big part of what we don't want entrepreneurs to have to do is like spend, just like take on tons of brain damage of like, oh my God, look at all this software I've got. How do I actually make it talk to each other? It's just like FML. Glenn, you're kind of going over some of that yada, yada, blah, 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 but uh, Glenn knows what he's talking about. So you definitely should be paying attention to this. And one of the things, Glenn, that I'm so happy you brought up earlier was um, what's happening with online advertising? Because this is something, it's a major pain point for not just our merchants, but perhaps for folks who are, you know, just starting their business elsewhere, maybe looking at Shopify thinking, oh, should I come over? Should I not? And I'm just so curious because we have a number of solves. And when I say we, I mean Shopify, about how to deal with some of these pain points. And one of those is detailed in the additions, Shopify collabs. Um, I'm just curious, how do you think that this new feature or this update to this new feature kind of can help with a little bit of these issues now dealing with how to get your product to your customers? Let me touch the macro and then I'll come into collabs. So for those who are unaware, like the big thing that happened in the past few years is that primarily Apple changed some rules about basically click tracking and cookie tracking on the internet. The two main rules are called ATT and ITP. But the, the TLDR of what happened is that it used to be more easy for advertisers to track like, hey, I saw an ad here on Facebook or on Instagram and someone clicked all the way through to my online store and they actually bought something and you could get much easier attribution of I paid for an ad and I got a sale. And a lot of that tracking um, in the name of privacy, which in some ways is good, but in other ways is bad, um, a lot of that ability to track has gone away, which does provide some benefits to privacy, but it's also made advertising a lot less effective. And so that basically adds up for merchant to, I now need to spend more ad dollars in order to get the same number of sales, which, you know, for a lot of these businesses, advertising is a huge component of their costs and a huge part of their effective margin. And so when that changes, it really does change the way that I think about it. And I've always said this is like, I always think of this kind of like waterline of like, okay, here, here are all the possible businesses. 
and which of the businesses are like above the waterline where they can survive and which of the businesses are below the waterline where they actually can't survive, where the economics of the business actually don't make sense. And the sea level's been rising is what you're saying. Exactly. Like when the sea level comes up a little bit, I just think of all the businesses that just slipped below the waterline. And I'm like, how do I bring the waterline back down so that those businesses can come back into the world of like this actually works? And so in the addition, we're doing a bunch of stuff to help with basically um, digital marketing. Collab's the one that you raised is a really interesting new thing that we're doing to help merchants get easily uh, connected with creators, right? So creators are a big part of now how products get visibility, particularly on social media. Um, and actually the, the, the job of reaching out to and connecting with and paying and like all the stuff that you need to do in order to manage like a creator marketing channel is actually like kind of a huge pain in the ass. And if you've never done it before, probably quite daunting. And so Collabs is a great example of something that just makes it super easy to use that channel as a new way to find shoppers in a world where that's getting harder. Yeah, I'm going to add to that too, because I think that, you know, as Glenn laid out perfectly, that this land of advertising is so difficult. But I think a lot of brands or retailers or anybody in the e-commerce space are looking at different ways. And affiliate marketing is definitely a, a big new push that's happening where people are actually using their own audiences to promote these products. I think collabs is really wonderful because thinking about managing how you actually find these creators, how you send them your product, how you send them the unique uh, links that they're going to be promoting your product. That's a lot of work for an individual retailer to be doing. So we are trying to simplify that in the most beautiful way. I would say that a lot of things that we do on our platform is about simplification. It's really trying to make sure that someone can just get started really quickly and easily. And this is a perfect example of that because in the past, it would have been a lot more you know, heavy lift for the the actual individual person to send all this stuff out, manage the shipments, get the URL links, all that stuff. And we are making it so simple for them now on the platform. Sometimes it's even just daunting, right? Like I bet you like, aff like creator affiliate marketing is probably not that hard, but like just personally, like I'm barely on social media. Like I only go on Twitter to like yell at people every so often, like when, <laughs> when I'm told to, but like if I was starting a business and I'd be like, oh, I have to like manage these celebrities on Insta on Instagram that sounds scary I'm like I'm I'm scared of the kids like you know so how do I but having a tool that makes that really easy would would help me get to a lot faster and then the other part that I think is also beautiful it also finds the right creators for you how does it do that I'm so curious yeah, so it looks at like the industry that you're in. It looks at the types of followers that these creators have. It also tries to figure out their demographics. It really tries to match you up based on what you're trying to sell. And I think that is also a huge uh, lift off of the uh, retailer or the person who's trying to, you know, find these connections. So again, we're really trying to make it as simplistic as possible for someone to get started without having all that headache of like, how am I even going to do this? As Glenn said, it sounds so daunting. Um, but like, yeah, we have a really great way to make that happen for, for our platform today. It sounds like a great way to make it happen. I'm curious, Des, if I can ask you, when it comes to creating these relationships with those creators, um, one of the differences that I could see is when you make your own advertisement, you're completely in control of what's being said. When you kind of work with a creator, maybe you're giving some prompts, but you're handing that over to them. You lose control of the message. You can in some ways. I always try to tell Oprah what to do and she never listens. It's really annoying. <laughs> she just says it her own way. Exactly. But Des, yeah, I'm just curious. Uh, is, is there a way that that potential issue is addressed? You always have some guidelines on like what you want from your brand and what the, you, you again, as a, as a marketer, it's so important, you know, to make sure that you have guidelines about what you're creating. Right. And I think it's the same thing for, um, for our merchants as well, too. They, they think about when they are interacting with these folks, here's the specific guidelines, but then more importantly, they're also telling them if they're doing something wrong, they can actually con contact them saying, Hey, this isn't the way that we usually talk about it or whatever it may be. Or you could also put, you know, just cut them off completely. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there's, there's definitely controls in place in case that goes sideways. Um, but as a merchant, you should always be thinking about what is your brand? What is the messaging positioning, how the look and feel should be. You're also trying to find these people that match that so that there will never be that weird interaction. You know, we've been talking a lot about how changes in the advertising space have really affected how merchants can make a sale, uh, but it's one thing to get your potential customer to your site. It's another thing to walk them through checkout, to get them to actually buy something. And 
Glenn and Dez, your team has been focused on making the checkout process so much easier. What sort of changes have you implemented with this new additions this year? I mean, look, just to say the thing, man, I think I think what everyone probably knows, but like probably people don't say too much is like you have to think about what the competition is here, right? The competition is people signed into Amazon.com with like a one-click checkout, payment on file, address on file, already trust Amazon Prime, that whole thing. That's the competition, right? So we all know that that's the alternative. So like when someone's on your online store, how are you going to deliver an experience that is, you know, going to compete with that? This edition was a really exciting one for checkout. I think there's a few angles here. I'll just start with the one that's kind of straight down the fairway, which is with our newest version of checkout, you know, the performance is much, much, much faster. We're now moving to a single page design, which is going to help buyers get through that checkout even faster than they did before. And this is one of those things you only see when you're like watching millions of checkouts at scale across, you know, millions and millions of stores is you see that every little thing you do, every little piece of interaction that you make faster in that checkout is turning into percentage points, percentage points, percentage points of conversion. And that adds up to millions and millions and billions of dollars that go directly into the pockets of our merchants. So from the experience point of things, um, yeah, going to the one page checkout, which is kind of like the checkout of 2023 is a huge thing. But then, you know, to go to what I, what I was saying before about what the competition is, you know, Shop Pay is now the most uh, heavily used uh, wallet on, on Shopify. So everyone, I'm sure, has seen it by this point. You're going through the checkout, you see the purple button, and it's a one-click checkout from there. Shop Pay and the main Shopify checkout are now fully integrated together, especially for large merchants. This is where it matters. Before, it used to be true that you could either have the Shop Pay checkout, which was kind of one size fits all and always looked the same. Or you could have your customized checkout with all of your branding and you know different like little additions you might have made, but you couldn't do both together, which is kind of kind of sucks, right? Like if you're a large merchant, like I care about my brand, I do a couple of things differently, but I want the one click thing, right? So now both of those things are together. You can do all of the branding extensions and shop pay all in one. So that now it's kind of um, uh, have your cake and eat it too, which is pretty awesome. We've also announced some great new developer tools. If you want to be able to kind of brand it the way you'd want, so basically you want to have your look and feel, the colors, you can round out edges. You can now really kind of create that nicely within some of our tooling that we have available for checkout. And I think one other thing that I want to also call out too is that, you know, for people who are also building their own checkout, it's really, really hard to think about doing all those little details of what you would need from a checkout. If you just go to our checkout page on Shopify.com, you will see all the different features that we launched or that we have available in the actual feature itself. And it's a lot. It's really, you start to see that we are obsessed with checkout. We are constantly evolving it. We're constantly making it better. We want to make it the most performant, the best converting. And we are always thinking about this. And so for anyone who's thinking about building checkout, go look at this and make sure that you're like, are you ready to take that on? Because you're going to be having to constantly evolve it. I think it's an important one for anyone who's like trying to get, you know, going on this as well. Right. And just to kind of zoom all the way out, we sometimes say this internally, like checkout is Shopify, Shopify is checkout. Like it's the most important part of what we do. And it really brings together all of the three main groups of people we care about, right? Like it brings together the merchants, like what's my checkout like? How do I control the experience? How do I make it my own? It brings together the developers who can now build checkout apps and write extensions for checkout that help make it better and different and serve different use cases. And then it brings together the buyers, the hundreds of millions of buyers who are registered for shop pay. How do we make the experience as seamless, as one click as possible for them? And so checkout is really the place where these three massive strategic vectors for Shopify come together and it all just has to work. And so this is the part where we just we just love making this 1% better every day because every 1% better we make it, literally dollars to the bottom line. And to that point, Glenn, a big part of whether or not a customer actually buys something from a website has to do with when it's going to come or, or what condition it might be in. And that's something that you and your team have tried to address with the Shop Promise badge. Uh, how does that kind of alleviate some of these concerns that potential shoppers might have? Right. I mean, this is all about trust, right? This is about buyer trust. Like when I buy this thing, is it actually going to show up? 
And this is another thing where like having the data scale advantages of Shopify really, really comes into the fore because here's the thing, Shopify knows there are plenty of our merchants who like ship quickly and get products to their buyers as fast as Amazon Prime, right? Like we know that because we see the data, right? Now, but how do you say that on a website in a way where people believe you, right? Because people are like, oh, well, I know what Prime is, but like, what's this promise from Joey Bag of Donuts, like merchant over here? So Shop Promise is the way of Shopify saying like, hey guys, we've got the data. We know that these guys ship on time and we know you're going to get it in two days. And so when you see this badge, you can believe it. And this is another way for the small guy to stand toe to toe with the big guy and like have a fair shot. Right. And so this this is one of the things we love taking all of our scale and our data and saying we're going to even the score here a little bit. Yeah, I think trust is the most important vector, as as Glenn mentioned, knowing you see that badge on your website is the most important thing. And we want to hopefully give that assurance for not only merchants, but the buyers so that when they see that, they know that they're going to get it on time. So I said this earlier, this is the year of checkout, but I also think hopefully this will be the year of, you know, shop promise too, where more people will start to feel that trust with the people that they're buying from. I'm chatting with Glenn Coates and Des Motamedi from the product team at Shopify. I hope you've been enjoying our conversation so far. If you want to learn more about all of the updates and improvements from Shopify, check out Shopify Editions. Our latest release, Winter 23, includes more than 100 updates. Head over to shopify.com slash additions for more, and thank you so much. I've been looking through the edition myself, just seeing some of the things that you are offering and how they intersect with things that we've been hearing on this podcast from our merchants. And one of the things that continues to be a pain point is selling stuff overseas. It can be so annoying for so many merchants. What are the taxes in Germany compared to Los Angeles? What do I do if I'm trying to sell in Jakarta, Indonesia, and I need to ship something there? And Shopify has been thinking about this. What are we doing in this space to make things easier with Shopify Markets Pro. When I first got to Shopify, the number one thing I said to Glenn, I said, hey, you know, we have such an opportunity to really expand globally. I feel like we've barely scratched the surface. And as you just said, you laid it out perfectly. It's like very daunting again to like think about how do I even start to get my business overseas? There's all these little permutations of like shipping costs, regulations. Um, It's a lot. And I think that We are, again, making something super complex, really easy for our merchants so that they don't have to worry about that headache of like managing all of those little nitty gritty details and that they're able to open up another revenue stream for them from an international perspective. And so we're also making a lot of really great headway with trying to even localize language, translate their website so that people can actually see their experience in the same way in their local language. So I mean, we are, again, thinking about all the little minutia details so that they don't have to worry about it. And as a merchant, they're able to like really be just keep seeing the sales come through, hopefully. (laughs) Ideally, it's just like the easy button, right? Like as as a merchant, you don't really want to have to be like what's involved in selling in Europe if you're in the US. You just kind of want to say, I want to sell in Europe. And like what we think of our job is like, how do we just close the gap between those two things such that you can basically just go like, I want to sell in Europe. And if you want to tell us like specific things about that, like, hey, I want this product to be this exact price in Europe, you can. But if you don't want to do that, like we'll just kind of like take care of it, right? And so like the goal is that people just have the maximum access to opportunity that they possibly can with doing the least work. And when you say the exact price, are you saying that we're constantly updating the conversion for dollars to euro, for example? Yeah, we, we do have the automatic conversion table. So you can say like, hey, I want all my products in Europe to just do the flat exchange rate conversion. And you can do things like say, hey, do the exchange rate conversion, but then round it up to the next, you know, nine euros or, or 9, 0.99 euros or whatever it is. Like, so you can do those kind of automatic things. And that's probably like a not a bad idea if it's, if it's a region where you're not doing that much sales yet. But if it's a region where you're doing a lot of sales, you might care a lot that it's exactly 19 pounds and not like 18 pounds 50 or 19 pounds 50. Like you can go into like advanced mode and be like, I want to set all the like exact things. Or you can just be like, oh, I want easy mode, like do the conversion for me. Like it's about right, you know. Des, you described this uh, chatting about additions as the icky stuff. Right. When we were talking, you had told me this is kind of the icky stuff that Markets Pros kind of takes care of. 
Yes, this is. I mean, as a so my parents had a children's clothing boutique for 25 years. And I remember my mom would like hate doing taxes every year because <laughs> it was just a lot of work. And so think about that, though, for like an international perspective. You have to first learn your own country. Now you have to learn everyone else's country. Right. And so we're making it so easy for folks. I mean, I I keep thinking about, wow, as like any other like merchant to think about, I can actually go sell my stuff now in another country. And like people are going to start to love their brand in another place. That's such a huge feat for someone to do. And again, we're making it so easy for them to do it. So I, the other thought that I, I wanted to also mention is that we're also trying to do, even with the payouts, we are very competitive even on the exchange rates when we do payouts as well too. And that's again, super important for a merchant because those things fluctuate every day. And so we want to make sure that when they're going to be able to offer their product in a different market, that then when they get that money come back to them, that it's actually hopefully getting what they want from it as well too. So I'm I'm really pleased that we have this in market now. One of the things about the addition that my my guess is like we were talking before about how lots of people think Shopify is basically just like an online store and a checkout. I think Markets Pro is a good example where Shopify is actually kind of like reaching into the real world and providing like not just like software, but also like actual services of people doing actual things like filing your taxes, like handling duties and customs, like some of that like on the ground work where you're like, I don't really want to start a team in that country to deal with that stuff. I really just kind of want to sell there. And so, again, I think this is one of those things where as Shopify gets kind of expands its ambitions into like, how do we help entrepreneurs with all the stuff they care about? It has led us beyond the world of pure software into the world of like actual physical services in some cases, because that is the ick, right? That's the like, oh man, do I really want to file a tax return in Azerbaijan? That sounds like a pain in the ass. Like, you know, do I really want to do that? No, not really. No offense, of course, to Azerbaijan or to Baku, but absolutely, <laughs> it's a great example, right? I mean, do, is that what you really want to do? And I cannot tell you, Glenn, how many times, we, we've had a couple uh, YouTube live episodes of Shopify Masters and all the comments that come in are like, I'm in this country, I'm trying to sell in the US or vice versa, and it's just such a pain and I need help. So it's awesome that we're working to, to make that a little bit easier. One of the other things that you mentioned was this idea of getting into the real world, which I think is so interesting. I just had a chat with Harley, the president of Shopify, last week, and he was all fired up about what we're doing in the physical space, moving away from this idea that everything we do, or the perception of us, is that everything that we do is only online. And one of the things that I think is going on that's really exciting with this additions is POS Go, which you all have been talking about now at nauseum. But please tell me how that has kind of changed the game for us as a company and what that means for merchants. Yeah. So for those who don't know, POS Go is basically an all-in-one hardware unit, which allows you to run like basically a handheld. It has the catalog and inventory and everything on it, but it also has um, a barcode scanner also has a card reader and chip reader. So it gives you in the palm of the hand everything you need to do to walk around the store, serve customers, run checkouts, so on and so forth. And again, this is just like an evolution of like where we've been for the past few years. Like we've had a POS product for the past, I don't know, three, four, five years at this point. Um, and it would run on any iOS device, any Android device. And we, and we still have that app and you can totally run POS on, you know, an iPad, iPhone or an Android device. But when you do that, you have to like go and buy extra hardware, right? Like you have to go and buy the stand, you have to go and buy the barcode scanner and all that stuff. And so this is just a really easy way to get started where you're like, hey, I've got a store. I just want, you know, my staff to have a couple of little handhelds to walk around and do their jobs. It's just like, I've got this thing. It's going to work. It does everything I need. Like, let's go. Yeah, I think what I'm really impressed with retail, and I, I think we had a conversation about this recently, PS Go is just, that's one, and I think Glenn just it described it beautifully. But we also have Tap to Pay now, which is where they don't even have a device. They're using their actually mobile devices to be able to actually make those transactions. And then we have as sophisticated where like an Allo, which has all the devices of POS and all of their stores as well too. And so what I love that I've been seeing with retail in particular from Shopify is that we're now solving from like, someone who's just getting started to as sophisticated as an aloe that has it in all of their stores. So we are really, again, trying to think about, you know, enabling retail in every aspect of what someone needs in their store. I think what's so great about POS Go is because you have all that access. Each individual sales associate now has, you know, inventory at their in their hand. They can give updates to their customers. They can do shipping and like orders right there, you know, right in the palm of their hand. This is all about, again, simplicity, 
access and usability. And like we are we're really thinking about all the different aspects of that across the board. And it kind of fits in with this narrative about maybe dispelling some of the preconceived notions which aren't true about Shopify, what we are and what we do. We're not just a platform that works for you online, but also we can help you grow your business in person. You know, as a company, we've always tried to be supportive of large merchants, but what we're doing now is making it even easier for some of them to replatform. Glenn, you mentioned earlier that you just bought some skate decks from Supreme just a few moments ago. Supreme, of course, a large merchant that joined Shopify recently. How are we doing this? How are we building a better platform for these big fish, so to speak? Yeah, I mean, look, one of the most painful things you can ever do in a business is have to replatform your business off like one big piece of business software onto another. There's a reason people stay on whatever QuickBooks or Oracle or whatever for like 10 years. It's not because anyone likes that stuff. It's because like switching to the next thing is like insane amounts of brain damage. And so like the best thing that you want when, when you're deciding to build your business and, you know, the software that you run your business on is a big piece of how the business actually works. One of the best things we can do for our merchants is to say, hey, we're going to be with you at the start. We're going to be there when you get a bit bigger. And as you keep growing and keep getting bigger, it's almost like a, a book that just keeps unfolding to new chapters. You're like, oh, there's a new door over here. Oh, there's a new thing over here. I just keep adding bits onto this thing and I can extend it through apps. I can extend it through my own custom software development. I can keep extending this thing um, and it, it just keeps getting better. That's one of the promises we, we, we just really want to be able to make to merchants. And um, Shopify is in a great position now, partly because of the core feature set of all the things that come with Shopify, the things that you can, you know, you can pick and choose. You can have this thing, you can have that thing, but it's all kind of there in the box. And then the other thing that's making this really, really powerful is all the improvements we've made to the developer platform. Just so many new APIs, so many new dev tools, so many new extension points, and so many new places where either the apps in our app store can add on a feature to your store that you that you need, or you know, someone like obviously large businesses tend to have their own in-house development teams. They can extend Shopify on top of those APIs and kind of make it their own. So. Yeah, that it's been really an exciting evolution over the past few years to to be able to kind of stretch up into the biggest retailers on the planet. Like Supreme does, you know, tens of thousands of transactions per minute when they drop. They're literally the the fastest selling flash seller in the world. No one comes even close. And we just ran them through, and it was smooth like butter. So you know, we're we're really proud to be able to do those kind of things. I also think there's another really interesting dynamic here is that a lot of these large entities have very different systems. There's not one system that looks alike. And so I think what's really beautiful about Shopify, and especially we just came out with commerce components that allow someone to pick and choose what they need from us so they don't feel like they have to take the whole gamut from us, which is, I think, an important vector. It's like, okay, well, hey, I want to be able to leverage subscriptions or I want to leverage you know, checkout or whatever it may be, that they're now able to do that in a, a very succinct way. I'm really excited to see where this is going to go for us. I'm, I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing more enterprises talking about how they're leveraging Shopify and these different components. I think it's time for us to deliver on what we were talking about earlier at the beginning of this podcast, which is some of the myths about Shopify that you all want to dispel. I think with any company, regardless of size, ours is not immune from that. There's always thoughts or preconceived notions, maybe about where we're from or where we began and where we are now. And you know, they just don't hold true anymore. And one of them, just to be fair about Shopify, is that it can't quite handle the large, biggest merchants, which we know is not true anymore. I'm just curious, are there other myths that you all want to dispel about Shopify? Well, I mean, this one's a bit near and dear to my heart, given the uh, the startup that I used to run before I, before I came to Shopify. The startup that I ran was a company called Handshake. It was basically like Shopify, but focused only on wholesale, not doing any direct-to-consumer stuff. One of the myths about Shopify is that we really only do direct-to-consumer. And if you go and read the last two editions, you'll see that in the previous edition, we kind of launched our the new version of Shopify B2B. And in the edition that we just shipped, there was another, I forget even how many updates to B2B and all the new features and all the new power that we're putting there. So I think that's a big one, right? That Shopify is only for D2C. Again, for me, having been in my old world of when I was running Handshake, I remember the thing that we always used to struggle the most with in our sales calls was 
people always wanted one system that did both, right? They're always like, I kind of don't want to run two e-commerce stacks and have to sync them together. And they're just like, can you just do both? And I think that's actually the coolest thing about what we're doing right now is it makes it super easy for a merchant to say like, hey, I'm doing DTC, I'm starting to get some wholesale business, I just turn it on, right? Or the other way around, like I'm doing a wholesale business and I'd actually like to start selling DTC, bam, just turn it on. And so I think that's a that's a pretty cool, cool new thing. Des, how about you? I want people to know that this exists. I think it's crazy that people don't know all the marketing tools that we have available on, on Shopify. So we do a lot when it comes to email, to automation, to segmentation. We actually do a lot for people to get access to their customers and slice and dice them and be able to do that in a really efficient way. We have something called Flow that automates all this for them as well, too. I, I really wish that people knew the magic and the power of this platform and what it's capable of doing for, for being able to reach out to their customers on an ongoing basis and be able to give them offers and leveraging all the either chat, email, the, the list goes on. So I'm really hoping that more people find out that, hey, we have way more on our platform than we do today. And I think that's the goal of the addition as well, too. Actually, I think that's an interesting thing to touch on, Des, is like part of why I think sometimes people think that Shopify's built-in marketing suite or built-in automation suite might be whatever, less powerful than something that's dedicated, like an external piece of software that's dedicated to that. The advantage that we have, and I think something that merchants and entrepreneurs should know about is that one of the bits of secret sauce that we have is really dialing in some of those tools to make them very, very commerce specific, right? So when you look at our customer segmentation engine and you look at our customer reporting, we make it really, really, really easy to write a filter or a query that's like, you know, people who've spent this much in the last 12 months or people who've bought a product from this collection in the last 12 months. And that might seem simple in the way that I just said it. And all of those external tools can do that stuff if you go to the trouble of writing it out. But what might be a 20 line SQL query in some external database is literally one line of like people who bought product X in the last 12 months in, inside of Shopify because the tools that we make, even though there are, you know, there are generic versions of automation platforms, there are generic versions of customer segmentation engines. Everything we do is so commerce specific that it takes something that would be really hard and turns into something really easy. And especially when you put them together and you say, cool, I've got my segmentation engine and it also connects to this flow automation engine and it's one click. That one click is much easier than the like, oh my God, I have to go call a my IT guy and do this integration and all of those things, all of that ease that adds up. Like when you're trying to run a business and you've got a million things to do, the difference between it was one click and it was three days really does add up. I'm also going to bring up even with our analytics with Shopify QL, we're constantly having the lens of commerce and anything that we do that like brings that data to life. And I think it's an important vector as well, because as Glenn said, there's so many solutions out there, but they're pretty generic, meaning that they can solve for any type of business. But we always have that commerce lens. And I think the other vector that I think is also really important is that because we're Shopify, we could do benchmarks around commerce as well, too. We know what stores are doing. We know what the transactions that are happening across the business. And so we're able to really understand like, hey, these are what best practices are in this area or the data that you should be seeing based on other stores that are doing the same thing. So I think benchmarking as well as just knowing the commerce space. And, and again, we always have that lens that I think is super important. So yeah, it's a unique factor for us that no one else can say that they do. And I mean, on the benchmarking thing, this is maybe not a myth, but probably a thing that most people don't know is that like 10% of all US e-commerce goes through Shopify at this point, right? So like when we say like we can benchmark stuff, we're actually doing it based on a very big slice of like what's actually happening on the internet. So um, that's also one of the things we love being able to bring to our merchants is the power of really seeing a very big slice of the digital economy and being able to make recommendations and analytics and everything like that from that, that volume of data. Well, certainly you two are integral to bringing that not just to our merchants, but to us here on Shopify Masters. And I wanna thank you so much, Des and Glenn, for doing this. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ben. Thank you. That's Glenn Coates and Des Motamedi of the Shopify product team. And thank you for joining us on Shopify Masters. Our show is produced by Megan Coyle and Gogo Zoger. Our engineers are Matt Schwartz and Miku Betlam. 
Shwang Esther Shan is our host and senior producer, and I'm Benjamin Gottlieb. We'll catch you next time right here on Shopify Masters. Shopify Masters.